station. This is Houston. Are you ready for the event? Ready for the event. MSNBC, this is Houston. Please call station for a voice check. Station, this is MSNBC. How do you hear me? I hear you loud and clear. Commander Kelly, I just want to start with, uh, I understand you keep in close touch with your brother a couple times a day on email, uh, with phone calls, on email constantly. What can you tell us about, first, how your brother's doing, how Congresswoman Giffords is doing since she has moved to Houston? I know there was some concern there. And how you're doing. Well, I think my brother's doing uh, about as well as anyone could expect in this type of a situation. Um, you know, I think he's dealing with it uh, very well, uh, and you know, he's 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 doing okay. He's a he's a tough guy. Um, you know, Gabby. Obviously, this is a serious injury, and um, you know, I only you know know what I I hear from him, of course, and uh, you know what I hear in the news. But, uh, you know, she seems to be doing as, as well as you could expect, too, considering the uh, extent of her injuries. And, uh, you know, likewise, I'm okay. You know, it's a tough uh, situation to be in on the, uh, on the space station with no way uh, to get, realistically, to get home to support, um, you know, your family members. But, uh, you know, I understand that, that the, this is kind of the the hand I'm dealt, so to speak, and uh, I'm dealing with it as best as uh, I think anyone could expect. I'm guessing when you're up there with a, a small group of people like this for a long period of time, you become close uh, almost uh, because there's, there's nobody else around. So tell me the, the best Gabby story you've shared with your crewmates. Well, I, you know, I certainly share a little bit of the, the positive stuff uh, with them that I hear from my brother. And, you know, when she does make uh, small, uh, you know, strides every day, and, uh, you know, they're certainly excited to hear that. Some of that's, uh, you know, reported uh, to the news media. Um, but, uh, you know, as, as far as particulars are concerned, I really can't, can't elaborate, but, uh, you know, I do, I do share that with them, and they are definitely uh, interested and, and concerned with, uh, with the situation. I think I, I didn't say the question uh, the way I, I guess. It, how, how have you, what story from, you know, uh, in the past that uh, your relationship with the Congresswoman, have you shared as a way for your crewmates to sort of know the Gabby Giffords you know? Yeah, okay, yeah, I, I understand what you're talking about. And, uh, you know, some of them know her and have met her, and some of them, of course, have not. And uh, she is really just an incredible uh, woman, um, incredibly uh, caring and dedicated to her, uh, to her job and to her constituents. And it's interesting that, you know, it doesn't matter which party you're from with her or, or what your opinion is, you know, if you... Um, you know, if she represents you, she represents, um, you know, everybody, uh, whether they voted her, voted for her or not, like her or not. And she's just really incredible in that way. She's, she's a, uh, you know, an amazing public servant and, uh, you know, just such a kind person. It's really, a, you know, a horrible tragedy that this happened, uh, you know, to her, not to mention the other people, you know, young Christina and, uh, and the other victims. It's, uh, it's really a terrible thing to uh, have happened. Commander, tonight's the State of the Union. There's going to be an empty seat uh, saved for Congresswoman Giffords. You're, we're seeing a lot of members of Congress decide they want to sit together, try to, uh, to, to peel back some of the polarization and partisanship and the heated rhetoric that we've seen over the last couple of years. That's one lesson they're taking from this. What do you want to see as a, as a citizen watching literally a million miles away what do you want to hear from not just the president, but from the entire political community about the lessons they're taking away from this? You know, I'm really excited to hear about the, uh, you know, this kind of 
coming together in uh, in Congress. You know, we have incredible challenges, uh, you know, to build a, a facility like the International Space Station. The things we do in space are incredibly challenging. And the way we can be successful at it is really due to teamwork. Um, you know, we need to find common ground uh, with the people we work with, and we need to work at a team as a team to be successful at stuff that is really, really difficult. And we have, of course, you know, many challenges in our country, and I think we can we can overcome them uh, through teamwork. So it's uh, really encouraging for me to see that uh, that you know maybe of any good that can come out of something like this, maybe our ability to work uh, together uh, better is uh, you know one of those things that can come out of it. And Commander, this Friday is the 25th uh, anniversary of the uh, Space Shuttle Challenger disaster. I I'm just curious if you could share sort of your thoughts, maybe where you were 25 years ago on January 28, 1986, and your thoughts on, on how the space program uh, responded at the time and where it is today. Yeah, and that day uh, I was in uh, actually in college, and um, it was uh, it was lunchtime uh, where I was, and and I was um, wasn't watching the launch, but as soon as I heard about it, I I turned the television on, and I I sat uh, there, uh, missed my classes for the rest of the day, following the uh, you know the news events as they unfolded, and uh, you know it of course was another incredible tragedy in our country but you know i think uh, as americans we are you know very resilient and we're good at uh, coming back from things like that and uh, you know i think in the space shuttle program we 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 did come back from challenger and then later uh, you know when we were met with the you know the tragedy of columbia we were able to uh, you know learn from from uh, you know our mistakes and 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 move forward and i think um, you know, that's the story of our space program. It's, uh, you know, meeting these great challenges. Occasionally, you know, bad things happen, but we don't quit. You know, we don't give up, and we continue to press forward. And I think the International Space Station is really a, a symbol of that. It's, a, you know, an international uh, effort, and it's a, really an incredible uh, facility we've built here as a team. And I think our space program has a bright future as a result. Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the MSNBC portion of the event. Please stand by for a voice check from CNN. Station, this is CNN. How do you hear me? I hear you loud and clear. Thank you so much. We are 30 seconds back to air. You will be speaking with TJ and Kieran. hour now. So many of us in this country have been following the Tucson tragedy, but there's one man who has had to follow the tragedy of his family members from the International Space Station. That's right, Con Commander Scott Kelly. He's been there since October. He is Mark Kelly's twin brother and the brother-in-law to Congresswoman Gabrielle Giffords. And Commander Kelly joins us this morning. He is live from space on board the International Space Station. Uh, we just want to tell our viewers we are going to have a little delay, obviously, because we, uh, we're talking to you and you're in space. Uh, but as we understand it, you've been able to talk to your brother a lot, up to five or six times a day. You guys can email, you can Skype. But I imagine it must be difficult for you hearing this news and then trying to get the latest updates on Gabby from space. What's it been like for you? Well, it's, uh, you know, it's certainly a horrible tragedy on so many levels, you know, not just with, with Gabby, but the, uh, the other victims, uh, you know, a nine-year-old girl, Christina, and, uh, you know, it's been tough, but, uh, you know, I'm, I'm able to follow um, the news and talk to my brother and other uh, friends and family members via telephone we have on board and communicate with email and, and actually watch, uh, 
watch the news. Actually, uh, CNN is is the way I've been following the uh, the the news as it unfolds, and uh, so I'm able to keep in touch, and I'm doing well with it. And I understand that uh, you know in this type of uh, you know situation, we all all the people involved need to need to be strong and uh, you know continue to do their best and. In kind of the situation they're in, and, and mine's here on the space station, and I understand that. And Commander Kelly, if NASA had a way to send a vehicle up quickly, grab you, and bring you back to Earth to be with your family, would you want to do that, or do you think that Gabrielle Giffords and your brother would prefer for you to stay there and do your duty up on the International Space Station? Well, you know, I would prefer to be, you know, able to support my brother and my family members in person. But, you know, at the same time, you know, I, I have a responsibility here and I recognize that. We actually have a vehicle that we can bring, uh, you know, take back to Earth in an emergency, meaning an emergency on the space station with, uh, you know, some serious things such as a fire or a depressurization or a, a sick crew member. But that's not something we would we, we would ever use in a situation like this. So, um, you know, I think they would want me to do continue to do my duty, and that's here as the uh, commander of the space station. And that's, uh, you know, what I'm prepared to do. Uh, I, hats off to you, I imagine. I mean, just knowing that you're up there till mid-March and knowing what's going on uh, down here with your family, I, you know, hats off to you for being able to do what you're doing up there. Um, it's also interesting that your twin brother is going to have to make a, a decision like this about his own uh, fate when it comes to commanding that October, uh, that April 19th shuttle mission. Um, as we heard, maybe in the next two weeks he's going to be making a call as to whether or not he's going to command that or whether or not he's going to... Uh, choose to stay back with Gabby. Uh, how hard is it going to be for your brother to make that call? Um, I'm not sure. You know, it's certainly a, uh, you know, very serious decision. There's a lot of, a lot of considerations. You know, he, he won't do it alone. You know, he'll certainly, you know, discuss this with, uh, you know, our leadership at NASA uh, with Gabby's family. I mean, he'll He'll certainly consider what Gabby would want in this situation, and uh, you know, whichever way he, whatever he chooses, you know, I'll certainly support him. You know, with Gabby being in Houston, he could still be with her, um, you know, while he trains during, uh, you know, in the mornings and in the evenings. So if he does choose to fly, it's not like, you know, it would be different if she was, uh, you know, being treated somewhere else. But she is in Houston, so he could still be there to support her. Certainly not, you know, 24 hours a day, seven days a week like he's been doing. But, you know, as she continues to, to progress a, um, you know, a different level of support uh, on his part might be acceptable. All right. Commander Kelly, uh, we appreciate you taking the time out here with us. Um, certainly, this is fascinating that we are able to even talk to you, but a lot of people have been uh, itching to hear from you as well. I know you'd like to be here, but uh, congratulations on what you're doing up there, your duty up there, and our best to you and the rest of the crew up there on the International Space Station. Sir, you take care. Thank you very much. Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the CNN portion of the event. Please stand by for a voice check from CBS. Yeah, I'll just. Yeah, hey, uh, Commander Kelly, it's Jeff Glor in, in, in New York. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you loud and clear. Excellent. I think we ha I think we have quite a delay, but next time I speak with you, uh, we'll be uh, we'll be putting this on tape for real. So stand by. Commander Kelly joins us uh, from the shuttle this morning. <clears throat> Let me try that one more stuff. Here we go. In three, two, one. Commander 
Dr. Kelly, I know this has been, been very difficult for you. Uh, how are you doing up there? You know, I'm doing uh, okay. Um, uh, probably as best as you could expect in a situation like this. You know, certainly, you know, there are, you know, emotions involved, but, uh, you know, I understand that my place is here um, doing my duties as a commander of the space station, and I'll continue to do that until it's uh, time for me to come home. How much information are you getting at this point? Is it, is it from news reports or is it from talking to the family, a combination of both? Um, yeah, it's a combination of both. In the beginning, I was watching uh, the news. The uh, uh, control center in Houston uh, would send uh, television news up to us on a fairly regular basis. And uh, certainly I was talking to my brother a lot, and I still talk to him a lot. So mostly now, uh, you know, several weeks into this, uh, after the tragedy occurred, most of the news I get is from uh, my brother, uh, via the telephone and also, you know, reading some, some print media and much less uh, through the uh, television news programs. Commander, how's, how's Mark doing right now? You know, I think he's doing probably as well as you could expect anyone to do in this type of uh, situation. He's very, you know, focused on, uh, you know, doing the best job he can to, to uh, you know, make sure Gabby gets the best uh, recovery she can and the and the best uh, long term uh, outcome. And you know, he's a he's a strong person, and uh, so I th I think he's doing he's doing pretty well. You think he's still going to be able to command the the final space mission here that um, he's scheduled for in a few months? You know, I think it's possible. He uh, you know has a lot of. Um, you know considerations and and he'll do that with uh you know consultation with our leadership at nasa and and um you know other i'm sure he'll get some other advice certainly uh he'll probably talk to gabby's uh family members and also consider what what she would want in this situation so uh you know i think it's a definite uh possibility but um you know i personally i i don't I have no idea which way he's, he's going to uh, this is going to go. So, um, you know, I think we'll know more here in a couple of weeks. Uh, Commander, finally, I know, I know you're incredibly busy up there. I'm, I'm, I'm wondering how this, though, has, has kind of changed your day-to-day -day activities um, up in space at this point. Well, it actually has because, you know, when we don't have a lot of spare time here, but the spare time I did have before the, uh, you know, this... Uh, horrible tragedy i spent you know doing things that astronauts normally do in their spare time you know looking mostly looking out the window and and taking pictures to, of the earth and you know educational and like public outreach kind of things and now um much more of my spare time is consumed with you know talking to my brother talking to my kids talking to other uh, uh family and and friends on the on the uh, telephone we have here and and following the uh, the events as best I can so it it has changed my uh, certainly changed my life here aboard the space station without a doubt all right commander scott kelly can't imagine what this has been like for you or your family but uh, our thoughts are with you be well thank you sir thank you station this is houston acr that concludes the event thank you Thank you, MSNBC, CNN, and CBS. Station, we are now resuming operational audio communications.